What up? I'm the AC, and this is Nintendo Nerd Nintendo. Now, I've already made a video on my first impressions of the new Pokemon game, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I'm playing Shield, and so far, I've put in about 75 hours. It's been a, a little over a week now. So here are my second impressions of it, now that I've had more time to digest what I've played. It's pretty much just a random list of things that popped in my head while I was playing that I kept note of. So first, let's talk about the daycare. The daycare is very different in this game. First off, there's just a flat rate of 500, whatever the currency is, Poke Dollar? I don't know. Uh, and per Pokemon. So that's different compared to in the past where it was 100 per level per Pokemon. And what this means is that the Pokemon also don't gain any experience either. And which is the main part of what the daycare was supposed to be. That's what it started with. Now it's pretty much only being used for breeding. And what's the point? I, at least for me there's no point. I don't really care about, you know, breeding for these competitive EVs and all that other crap. Mainly, I just like to dump Pokemon in there and leave them so they can gain experience and level up. That's pretty much how I got a level 100 ditto in my past games, because it stayed in there forever through multiple generations. The same ditto. Um, but yeah, the daycare's a little disappointing how it's set up now. On the other hand, uh, I do like that's also in the old games, but it's been revamped for this, is the Runcom bike. It is super fast, but it's a little uncontrollable. If you go past something and you want to turn around, it is a headache. It's a whole maneuver all on its own. Uh, but the fact that it can ride on water is super cool. And it takes away the like little extra time it needs to like, do you want to surf? Yes. And you don't want to, it's, it's just you're on land and you're on water. That's great. Love it. The way the PC works has been changed just a little bit. Uh, first off, it is great being able to access the PC from anywhere. The only thing, let's go series, you know, did right. One of the few at least. The weird thing, I don't know exactly why they did this, is, and I don't remember if it was always like this, but the Pokemon don't get healed right away if they go into the PC. And it's, there's actually, I don't know the exact time, but there is a certain amount of time until they are healed. Um, which is kind of disappointing if you want to use a Pokemon right away. You can't just take it out of the PC, even though you have the PC with you. So now, if you want to use a new Pokemon you just caught, you still have to go back to Pokemon Center, and then still heal it. So, uh, I don't know. I found, for the first little while, I was still in the habit of going to the Pokemon Center every time I was wanting to access my PC box. Now, I've finally gotten in the habit of using it from my bag, or... And that's mainly because I keep my PC very organized. <laughs> I keep them organized by the Pokedex number now. Sometimes I, when I feel like I rearrange it to the levels, and I don't know, I rearrange and reorganize stuff all the time. That's just kind of me in general in real life. So, what that leads to is the Poke Jobs. I think the Poke Jobs are a cool idea. Um, great way to get a lot of experience with Pokemon, especially since daycare won't do it for you now. Or just raise your other stats. And it took me a little while to realize they also change daily. So there's, you know, even though I don't actually do anything, there are different jobs you can do. What I don't like about it though, and the reason why I probably would not use it for a long while, is it re uh, messes up my organization organization of my boxes especially if I do multiple jobs at once my Pokemon get scattered all over the place and it's I, I will literally spend hours just rearranging and organizing when I choose to do so but when it's making me do it anyways 
I'm not crazy about that. So, kind of have to get over that. Uh, the next thing, which I think is pretty cool, I already mentioned how the Rotom deck is not as much of a Rotom as it is a design. But another thing that's included in this Pokedex are the po like the objectives on which Pokemon catch. I think that's a neat little thing to one help you remember which Pokemon you haven't caught yet, but also like maybe you should go and catch this Pokemon deck. And it's been great. And it's kind of fun, but I've almost completed my Pokedex. I think I'm at 371 Pokemon, and I've seen like 387. So, you know, I'm almost done anyways. So, eventually, those objectives aren't even going to exist for me. Now, one of my biggest annoyances, which also won't last much longer, is the online trading system with strangers. I don't, I like the global trading thing, I don't know why they didn't add it, but trading with people online is annoying. Like, it's been super helpful getting these Pokemon that I haven't had yet, but, man, if you're looking for a certain Pokemon, it is just, like, pulling teeth trying to get them to stop trying to push their Pokemon, or, you know, finding someone who's willing to give you the Pokemon you're looking for without even knowing what Pokemon you're looking for. And I picked up on like some, you know, kind of plan or clues on how to do it. Pretty much what I do is, you know, for example, I'm still looking for a Mawile. I don't know why I haven't found one yet, but pretty much what I do is the equivalent for Shield is Sableye. So I'll just put that out there a couple times and if it doesn't get any hit, I switch to another Pokemon like I'm looking for the rest right back to and it keeps going back and forth. Eventually there's some hits, sometimes there's not. I don't know. It's annoying. I wish there was another way you could like tell what or like show what Pokemon you're looking for. And that would like get rid of any bullshit like working around trying to figure out what each person's actually looking for. And I mean for now it's annoying for me, but then there's I think there's just some people on there that are just wanting to trade Pokemon, and I don't know why. Uh, there's the mystery trade, which is still great, or surprise trade on this one. And I do that whenever I just feel like it. I have a box of extra Pokemon I just randomly send through, and those are actually neat. You know, you get a lot of Pokemon from around the world. So I don't know why people are still trying to do that in the regular trade. But, I don't know. That's just my own gripes with it. There definitely still needs to be a better trading system online. I miss a global trade where you could just put up the Pokemon you were wanting to trade and what you want for it. And then, you know, you can look for other Pokemon too. I don't know. Whatever. But, that is pretty much everything for now that I have remembered from the second impression. There might still be more things I haven't realized yet. I still haven't done too much ever since I beat the story and epilogue. Uh, I'm pretty much have only been trying to kill my Pokedex, deck, so I can still go and re challenge, you know, the gym leaders and the whole champion league and whatever. Still haven't done that. Haven't done any what is it like a battle the equivalent of the battle tower on here. You know, so I'm still gonna do all that stuff. Um, I've raised a few Pokemon to level hundred already just because it's super easy. And that's thanks to the experience candies are a huge help, especially the extra large. Um, they're terrific. Up until you get to like late 80s and 90s, they're even better than rare candy. But yeah, that's what I've been thinking about in Pokemon Shield for so far. But yeah, what have you been doing in Pokemon games? Have you been playing them? Have you been liking them? What have you thought about them? Do you agree with I? What I say? Do you disagree? Should we start a discussion? The answer is yes. But yeah, let's talk about Pokemon. I'm the AC. Thank you for watching. Bye.